Uh, that's great. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, happy Monday. Uh, another week. First week. I guess first full week. Um, anyway, okay. So um, first thing that we're going to cover in our class is going to be uh, Git. So before we get into Python, before we get into um, like coding and stuff like that, um, I want to introduce Git. Okay, and so uh, all of you will <laughs> be required to use Git. So um, Git, what is Git? Git is a version control system, um, and it it basically allows you to kind of track and track all of the changes uh, that you make to files as you work on them. Um, all of the changes that you make uh, and save and things like that, you, you commit them to the repository. And as you commit things to the repository, these are kind of creating little like save points or checkpoints, snapshots, okay? That allow you to roll back, go back in time, retrieve things the way they were. Uh, you can kind of create, you know, branching timelines, you know, so. Uh, a common trope in science fiction movies is that there are, you know, multiple universes and multiple timelines, you know, things that are similar but slightly different. And, um, and Git is kind of like this time machine that allows you to kind of travel back in time and also go to these different uh, timelines, okay? Um, it's, you've probably done a little bit of version control yourself as you've worked on papers and projects and things like that. Um, I don't know if you've had the experience of saying like, uh, you know, uh, as you name your files, you call something final draft, and then you uh, make some additional changes and you say like final, final draft, and you make more changes and you go, you know, final, final, final draft, and, and so on and so forth. And, you, um, and then when you submit your paper online, you accidentally submit the wrong thing and it's it's a very frustrating experience and then you have to send an email and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to send you that file or whatever. Um, Git uh, kind of handles all of this uh, elegantly, okay? Um, when, um, so you might have to uh, install Git um, and so to do this, you'll go, uh, you'll look up Git SCM Okay, this is the software that you will uh, use. Okay, and so if you're on Windows, you can just kind of download that. Um, if you are uh, doing a Mac, then you can follow any of these instructions. Okay, um, and, uh, and if you don't have a Homebrew, then you have to kind of follow the instructions on how to install Homebrew. Basically, you, you copy this thing uh, to to install Homebrew, and then once you have Homebrew, then you can do brew install git if you're on a Mac machine or if you're on, on Windows or whatever. Actually, Mac, you probably already have git as part of your Unix system. It'll just be a little bit of an older thing, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, these are some of the uh, important uh, and basic commands. These, you know, um, it, it might feel a little bit silly, but you can just kind of do a lot of uh, git basics with these, with these commands, okay? Uh, one is git status. Git status you should be using very frequently, uh, especially in the beginning. As you're learning git and trying to understand how it works, git status will be very, very helpful to let, help you understand what git is doing. Okay? This tells you the status of the repository. And I recommend, especially in the beginning, run it after every single, <laughs> like run it every other command. You do a, you do a command in git, then do git status. Do another command and git, then do git status. And you can see how every single command that you're doing is changing the status of your repository. Um, the, the way it works is, you know, on your computer, you have files open, okay? You save them on your, uh, on your computer, and then you want to kind of create a snapshot of your directory or your project at that time. And uh, what you will do is you will add basically the file that you want tracked, okay, into the staging area. So you do git add and then whatever name your file is. Okay, so here I have file name.txt, but it could be, you know, 
uh, you know, project dot, you know, docx or, you know, presentation dot PDF or whatever it is, okay? You do git add. If you want to kind of add all of the changes that exist in your directory or your project at that time, your repository, then you'll just do git add dot, and that will add all of the changes. But um, I, I don't know if, uh, I, I generally recommend um, adding files one at a time there, okay? And then once you add them, then you will commit those to your repository. So you'll do git commit, and then every commit requires a message, a description of what that commit. So um, you might do git commit dash m, and it will be, uh, you know, added file, you know, 456.txt or something like that. Uh, you don't want to just do um, <laughs> your description of the commit. If you're lazy here and you just write made some changes, made some changes, made some changes, um, it will be very difficult for you to kind of navigate your timeline, okay? Because these are basically uh, moments in time that you might need to go back and revisit at some point in the future. And you can say, hey, you know what? I need to go back to you know, the version of the file where it, was, uh, where it looked like this, okay? And so you wanna kind of put little descriptions of these things to yourself so you can kind of identify these moments in time. Um, and so you'll want your descriptions to be as helpful as possible so that you can kind of navigate um, th these different times. Yes? When you say GitHub, or Git is for yourself or for an employee? It, it's for both of you. It's it's for it's for everybody. It's it's especially important in uh, I guess large organizations where you have multiple people working together. That's it's it's especially important for that. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, for yourself, maybe it's less critical in that. You know, how often do you need to roll something back or something like that? Um, but I don't know. Uh, I think on like on Mac, there's something called Time Machine. No, wait, is Time Machine the backup thing? I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of times where you can kind of like restore deleted files. You can restore older versions of files and things like that. Okay. Um, and so you know, a lot of these things are done automatically for you. And I don't know if that's ever saved you in a pinch, right? Um, and and Git is basically that but you have full control over everything, okay? And so, you know, a, a lot of, basically a lot of these features of Git, people realize, hey, this, this is really good. And so they're like incorporated into your, your own operating system and things. So, you know, you lose a little bit of the appreciation of what, what this does. But, you know, certainly in kind of a corporate environment or, or wherever where you're kind of working with other people, um, you'll want to, you, I, th I think you want to retain full control over uh, all of this, so you can kind of uh, pinpoint exactly. You know, if you're any kind of software engineering environment, um, everything's exact, <laughs> so um, or it should be. Um, so anyway, that's th that's what we do here. Okay, so uh, so you add your changes, you stage them, and then when when you're happy with the changes that you're about to commit, you commit them to the repository, and that once you make a commitment. That is like a, I don't know, canon event in the timeline, okay? You cannot uh, remove that. that. That moment is forever saved, okay? And, you know, you're going to make further changes, but you can always go back to that exact moment if you need to, okay? So this is kind of what it looks like. This is the directory that you're working in. This is where you have, uh, you know, you, you tell Git, I want this directory being tracked. And you make changes or you add files, right? You create a new document in there. You make changes to any of these existing things. And then what you do is you add, you, you use git add, and that, that puts them in the staging area, okay? That puts them in the staging area. And then, uh, then you commit them, okay? And that's gonna go into your repository. Uh, your repository will have uh, what's called a main branch. This is where kind of all of the changes are being made. And then if there's something you kind of want to experiment with, but you don't want necessarily in the main branch, you can create like a, uh, a branching, uh, kind of a branched timeline. You can create a branch, work on things over there. And then when you're happy with those things, you merge them back into the main timeline or uh, the, the main 
the, the main branch or you know you just kind of leave them as such okay you might wonder like why do we have these two uh, commands git add followed by git commit okay why not just have a git save okay git save point or something like that okay um, the idea is that you your commits should be small logical changes that can be easily understood um, and can kind of, uh, you know, if you need to revert back to that point or you need to check uh, things at that, uh, at that time, that you can do that, okay? Uh, but a lot of times, as we work, we don't, um, our, our own personal workflow is not, does not consist of small <laughs> logical incremental changes, okay? We're often working on multiple things at the same time. You often have like multiple tabs open and you're working on a little bit of over here and a little bit over here and a little bit over here, okay? And so, um, you know, our workflow is often a little bit more spaghetti and, you know, kind of mixed up and we wanna kind of detangle all of that and so, you know, when you, Git requires you to deliberately add each change that you want, kind of one at a time or whatever, and then you commit to them. And so if you have been working on five files at the same time, you can create a commit for, you know, each of those files separately if you want to. If you want to put all five in there and commit all five at once, you can. If you want to just say, hey, I want to uh, take these two files that are related and you know these two files that are related and keep this one over here uh, in separate commits you can do that and therefore you know you can roll back the timeline and um, you know extract whichever version of the file that you need at any time okay um, and, and all of those changes are, are tracked in the log um, if with with all of this talk of kind of going back in time and whatnot if you need to do that um, you can check the log, okay? So the log is going to show you all of the different kind of save points, all of the different snapshots, all of the different commits that you have, all right? And it might be really, really long, and you, you uh, use space to go to the next page of the log and whatnot. If you need to quit the log, you just type the letter Q, okay? And as you go through the log, you'll be reading the different commits, that you have the di different descriptions that you've made. So again, you don't want your descriptions to just be made changes, made changes, made changes, because that's going to be impossible to navigate. But uh, you know, with each of these commits, you say, oh, okay, this is the time I, I updated it with you know the June June numbers, right? So for example, like let's say you're keeping track of uh, I don't know information, and you're entering data, and then later on you realize like, oh, you know what? The numbers that we entered in June, those were incorrect, and we need to kind of like fix those, and we want to kind of I don't know, wh whatever. Or, uh, you know, we overwrote some numbers and I want to kind of go back in that moment. So you can say, all right, you know, let's go through the log and look at, you know, you have the date information and also whatever um, descriptions you have. And then so you, uh, you find that and that, uh, that particular entry is going to be identifiable with something called a hash. Okay. Um, so let me, let me see if I can go to... So here I have different, um, so these are, these are kind of the different uh, commits that I've made, all right? So this is, uh, on GitHub it has a, a, a nice interface for the, um, the log here. Uh, here, let me come over here. Okay, and so these are, these are the same, uh, this is the same log as, uh, as reflected over here. It's uh, the website's certainly easier to, to read, but you can see um, e each of these commits, okay, have a hash, so you can see 37F90A, okay, 37F90A, that's kind of the most recent commit, and you can kind of go back in time commit 9e18529, 9e18529. And so these are the different, uh, they're the hashes that identify that moment in time. 
and then um, and then these are the the descriptions I have added lecture one dash one added like added zero dash one added lecture zero dash one uh, initial commit and so on and so forth and so you can kind of go back in time at any one of these moments and you can see what the uh, um, what the repository looked like at that moment in time. Okay, and then if you want to kind of restore a file from that thing, you say git checkout. Okay, you give it the name of that hash, whatever it was. Here I just put an ab123ef, whatever that hash identifier is, the name of the file that you want to restore, and it will, you know, go to that moment in time and pull out that file. So you can kind of look at it uh, and work at it. Okay. You can also, um, if you want a little bit more detail, okay, uh, you can call git show, and you can look at what the uh, what changes were made during that commit, and so on and so forth. So I could say git show. Uh, I'll type in nine e one eight five. Okay. And so this is. Um, this, you know, this is what what I did, and basically in this change, I just added, uh, I added a PDF file, okay, and so um, so that that appears here, and you can see what um, what happens there. So uh, a lot of times you might have like a different kind of uh, file name, and, and this will uh, appear, and this is how the uh, the information will uh, will appear there. Let me talk a little bit uh, about GitHub. And before uh, we go on, I'll give you your first view quiz answer. First view quiz answer today is the letter E. E as an elephant. So GitHub is different from Git. Git is the software, the version control system. GitHub is a website or a company that hosts remote repositories. So um, you could use Git without touching GitHub at all, okay? And, and again, Git just kind of keeps track of all of your, your changes and whatnot. A, a lot of times, you will be collaborating with other people or sometimes you just want your stuff backed up on another on another machine, okay? And so GitHub is kind of like allowing you to create a remote repository, like a repository in the cloud that you can synchronize your own laptop with uh, the remote repository. And you'll kind of keep these two things uh, synchronized and therefore other people can kind of collaborate with you and they will, uh, you know, if, if you give them access to the repository, they can also make changes to the repository, and then you can, uh, you know, pull those changes uh, from the remote, rep remote repository and whatnot. There's um, other uh, services out there that uh, other companies offer similar services, such as GitLab, Bitbucket, things like that. And these are they all uh, offer different um, things and different pricing plans. Um, GitHub is probably still the most popular one uh, out of all of these things. Uh, a lot of open source projects are hosted on GitHub, and, um, and so GitHub is still probably uh, uh, one of these, uh, I would say, an important resource for us to use. Okay? Um, you don't have to use GitHub. You can still have remote repositories on a different thing. Like you could set up your own server, and you can host your own remote repositories. Uh, and things that way, um, but you know, GitHub really makes it easy. And um, and there's 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 a few ways you could set up a remote repository with GitHub. Um, I would say the easiest is to create the re repository on GitHub itself, and then you clone the repository from GitHub to your local machine. That would be um, my recommendation. So um, so what you will need to do is you will need to create an account at github.com. So you'll have to go to github, 
Uh, and this is going to be part of your first homework assignment is you have to go to GitHub, create an account, and then you have to grant your computer permission to talk to GitHub. <laughs> okay, so uh, you need a key. So you're going to have to establish some kind of key. Um, so I'll show you how to create an SSH key on your local machine so you can get your local machine, your computer, to uh, push changes to your repository on GitHub in your account. Because uh, they want to keep things secure. They don't want uh, some stranger <laughs> messing with your files and things like that. Okay? So, um, so let me show you how, how this is going to work. Okay? Um, okay, so I have um, I have two different GitHub accounts. Okay, um, one is my professor account where I'm posting uh, all of my files and whatnot, uh, but here. This is me pretending to be a student, okay? Um, so that I can kind of demonstrate to you what, what you need to do as the student, okay? So this is a picture of me. I, I look really young, but I think I'm in college in this picture. I think I'm like <laughs> 20 or something. I, I feel like I look like I'm 12 in that picture. But, um, but anyway, so, so you'll create an account. Um, and then on GitHub, what you will do is you'll go to your settings. Okay, so uh, once you create your account, you're going to go to your settings. So this is Miles Chen Dash student, and you're going to come over here to SSH and GPG keys. Okay, SSH and GPG keys. And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to want to add a new SSH key. Okay. All right. Also, on uh, my computer, I have a couple terminals open. Uh, this terminal over here represents my regular computer, and over here, uh, this is a virtual machine that I'm using, to, again, to kind of pretend to be a student, okay? So uh, this is what you would need to do, because, you know, again, I already have SSHQ set up on my regular thing, but here's a virtual machine where I'm going to kind of go through setting up an SSH key, and we're going to get it to synchronize with my uh, student account here, okay? So... Um, from the terminal, you're going to uh, call SSH keygen. Oh, okay. So hold on. Uh, let me back up. If you're on uh, Mac, okay, or Linux, some Unix uh, system, you can just open up a terminal window and type this stuff in. If you are on Windows, okay, again, uh, first you're going to have to install Git, um, Git onto your computer, git scm, and then once you do that, then you'll open up git bash, okay? Uh, just your regular old, I, I don't think your regular old terminal PowerShell is going to work, so you're going to want to open up git bash, and if you open up git bash, then you can run these commands, okay? So uh, on Windows, you'll run git bash. Okay, so the, uh, the command uh, that you're going to use is going to be uh, ssh dash keygen, okay, dash t, uh, the command is written at you over here, uh, ed25519, uh, th that's the cryptographic uh, algorithm to uh, create this thing, dash capital C, and then in quotes, the email address that you used to create your GitHub account. So uh, my student account on GitHub is created using um, Miles Chen at UCLA.edu. Okay, and so here it says generating uh, a public private uh, ED259 key pair. It says enter the file in which to save the key. And so here it says it's going to save it in home miles.ssh id ED25519. And that's fine. I'm going to just go ahead and hit enter. Okay, it says enter a passphrase. Passphrase, leave empty for no passphrase. I recommend not to put in a passphrase. I, I recommend leaving this empty, um, especially if you, like, if you share your computer, sure, maybe, but I imagine most of you, you, your computer is yours, and you already have a password to log into your computer in the first place. 
uh, you don't need to add a password here, okay? Enter the same password phrase again, which is gonna be nothing. I hit enter and um, and there, there it goes. It says your ID identification has been saved uh, over here. Your public key is saved here. Your key fingerprint is here. And here's this random art image. Okay, so that is the process. So again, the command that you're going to type is written right here, SSH keygen dash T ED 255 dash C, and then you put your email address in there. Yeah. So you're actually going to do things to this. I'd be checking, but isn't the entire point that you cannot reverse things? Like, why are you using a key? Or if you're going to right? It doesn't make sense that you'd be using a key for a hash. No, I'm not using a key for a hash. This is, uh, this is, this is this key is so I can um, talk to my GitHub account. Okay, so this is to authenticate my computer, right? Because because uh, when you interact with GitHub, you can interact it through the website, but you can also just kind of type stuff into your terminal, and it will send it to GitHub. And so, how do I? How does GitHub know? that my computer is okay to change things in my account, but your computer is not allowed to change things in my account. That's what the SSH key is here, okay? This is kind of like the ID, uh, the identification, so it can identify my computer and, uh, and say, okay, you're allowed to make changes to Miles Chen's account. So that's what this is uh, gonna do. Okay, so, uh, so here it is, and so now I can, um, now I need to, provide that key to GitHub, okay? So I'm going to change into my um, change directory. So, so I'm in my home directory. So uh, you can do cd tilde to get to your home directory. I'm gonna change into my SSH folder, which is gonna be in .SSH, okay? Because it says, you know, you're in uh, the files in .SSH. I can list uh, the files there. I'm gonna just uh, type in ls, and there are I have, um, these are the two files that I need, okay? There's four files here, but the two files I, or actually the one file I need is just the public key, okay? So the actual kind of, the actual key is in here, id underscore ed255.19, and then the public key is right here, id underscore ed255.19.pub. And so what I want to do is I want to copy basically the contents of this thing. So I'm going to just type, so on a, on a Mac, I'm going to type in cat id underscore ed255 um, dot pub. Not, make sure you put in the dot pub, okay? Because you only want to copy your public key. That's the public facing key. Um, uh, if you're on a Windows machine, you're going to, uh, I believe the command you're going to use is type, T-Y-P-E, okay? Um, so, uh, so you're going to, do that. So this is this is the public key that I have. Uh, it starts off with SSH ed two fifty five nineteen, and it should end with your um, email address. Okay, and this is to identify. Uh, this is the public key, and then so now you go to under uh, SSH and GPG keys, and in your account you're going to click new SSH key, and you're going to paste that thing. Okay, you're going to paste that um, that string there, and then the title uh, will be a description of the computer that you're using. So I'm going to call this my uh, uh, Surface laptop. This is a, a Microsoft laptop, uh, and this is on my Linux virtual machine. So I mean, you might just call it <laughs> MacBook Air or whatever, right? Uh, uh, to, to describe yours, because if you have multiple computers, right? So you might have uh, your own, you know, your MacBook Air, but then at home maybe you have a desktop computer. You'll just you'll just kind of title these things so you can distinguish one computer from another, um, because these are authentic. Uh, these are associated with each physical machine. Okay. So this is uh, the SSH key uh, that I have. Okay. So you'll, you'll copy that uh, to your GitHub account. Uh, let's see. And then uh, the next thing we're going to do 
Uh, okay, so yes, yeah, so adding that SSH key, so you'll, uh, you'll copy that. Oh, I guess um, you can clip that to your thing. All right, so you're going to add that. So, you know, Mac laptop, home PC. So you're going to add that to GitHub. And so now what we're going to do is um, I'm going to, in my student account, I'm going to just kind of create, just to kind of, just for the fun of it, okay, we'll create a new repository, okay? So I'm going to click uh, New right here. It says, uh, Miles Chin Student doesn't have any uh, re public repositories, so we'll just create a new one. Okay, this one, I'll just call this uh, Demo uh, Repo for Demo Repository. And uh, description, this will be just be uh, Demonstration Repository for class. Okay, uh, this will be public. I'll go ahead and add a README file. Okay. And I'm going to click Create Repository. So that's going to create a repository on uh, on GitHub under my account. Okay. So here it is, right here. This is the repository. So now what I want to do is I want to clone this repository from GitHub onto my local local computer here. So what I'm going to do in GitHub, I'm going to go to this little green button that says Code. I'm going to go to the drop down button. Um, you have a different things. Well, I'm going to, I want to use the SSH to clone this. Okay, so I'm going to come over to SSH and I'm going to click uh, copy URL to the thing. Okay, and it says git at github.com miles chen student demo repo dot git. That's what I want. And so over here, I want to, I'm going to go back to my home directory right now. So Always make, always make sure you know where you are. So here it says I'm in my SSH directory. So I'm going to go back to my home directory. I'm going to do cd tilde. And, uh, and here it says I'm, I'm at my home directory. It's, uh, the, let me see, maybe. How do I change my appearance here? Okay, well, anyway, all right. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go back to my home directory, and I want to clone the repository. So I'm going to type in git clone, and then I'm going to uh, paste that, uh, that URL here. So under um, demonstration repository, again, you, you click uh, under SSH, you copy that thing, and your command is going to be git clone, and then you just paste this. Okay. And then, so when I do that, it's going to say cloning into demo repo, and uh, and now it has cloned that. And then, so if I list off the contents of my home directory, now I have demonstration repo uh, as as one of these things. So I'm gonna I can change into this folder. I can see, do cd demo underscore repo, and um, and now I'm in that folder, and I can list off the contents there. And basically, all I have is readme.md. Okay, I just have uh, the one file. So this, my repository on my local computer reflects what I have here. Um, so, so let's say I want to add something to my repository. Okay, um, I'm going to use say nano and just create um, list.txt. I'm going to create a new text file. Nano is a text editor that uh, operates in the terminal, and uh, and I'm going to just say okay, this is a uh, list of things I like okay and we're gonna say I like um, I like UCLA and I like uh, statistics and I like Python okay so so this will be my list I'm gonna hit uh, I'm gonna save it so that's uh, on nano it's a little bit strange but it's control O is the uh, this command to save I'm gonna uh, save it to list.txt and I'm gonna hit control X to exit here. So again, the command to create uh, a file is, uh, or to use the text editor is going to be nano, and then you put in the name of a file that you want to create. So I did that. So now I'm going to do git status. And under git status, it says, hey, we have a new file that is, uh, that's here. It's not tracked. So we're going to add that. So I'm going to do git add list.txt 
and I'm going to do git status now. And you can see git status says um, these are changes to be committed. So I want to commit these changes. So I'm going to do git commit dash m. And we're going to say added, or I'm going to say created list.txt. Okay. And then um, I, get a, I get a message here. It says, author identity unknown. Please tell me who you are, okay? Um, and so, you know, one of the nice things about Git is that the error messages that Git produces are actually very helpful, okay? If you read, uh, so if you get something that's unexpected, don't just throw up your hands and say, oh, I don't know what to do, okay? There's actually often very helpful things if you just kind of read through things. So it just tells you, hey, run these two things. Run git config global user email with your name and, and your email, okay? So we'll do that, okay? So I'm going to do git config dash dash global dot uh, global user dot email. Uh, okay, so this is going to be Miles Chen at ucla.edu. And then git config global uh, user dot name. So it tells me exactly what I need to do to fix the issue. All right, and then so now I'm going to go back and try this again. We're going to try the commit, git commit dash m, created list.txt. So, uh, so it does that. OK, so here's the commit that it made to the main branch, uh, one file there. And so I can do git status. And here it says, on branch main, your branch is ahead of origin main by one commit. Use git push to publish your local commits. Nothing to commit working tree clean. So, so basically all of the files that I have, there's only two, readme.md and list.txt. These are here, but I can now type in uh, to publish my local commits. I'm going to just type in git push. And this is going to push the changes from my local machine onto GitHub. So I type git push. And it says it's writing this, and it has pushed this to um, the repository up here. So if I refresh this, okay, we can see list.txt now appears here. Okay, created list.txt one minute ago. I can click that, and it says this is a list of things I like: UCLA statistics, Python, so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, and then, you know, if I want to go back and I want to make more changes, I can do uh, nano again. Uh, we're going to do list.txt. Uh, this is a list of things I like. Okay, um, some things I don't like. All right, um, I don't know. Okay, mosquitoes. All right. Is it E? I don't know. Okay, so we're going to save that. Okay, and then we'll quit. And then, so if I type in git status here, it's going to say, oh, you know what? You modified list.txt, OK? So I'm going to add that. I'm going to add list.txt. We're going to commit that, dash m. So we're going to say uh, added um, things I don't like to list.txt. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and do git push. And that will push that change again to my repository. So if I refresh this, now uh, list.txt uh, is updated. Okay, And so this is uh, how I can do things. And then, um, all right, so sometimes if you're kind of working with somebody else, you know, somebody might put push different changes. Okay, And so um, you can actually edit things directly in uh, from the GitHub website. So here, uh, I'm going to click Edit This File, Demonstration Repository uh, for this class. And I'm going to just say, uh, I'm uh, editing the file here on uh, GitHub. OK. And then we'll go ahead and commit these changes. Update readme.md. Sure, we'll go ahead and commit that. And then so if I go to Demo Repo, so now uh, the readme. MD has been updated here. And to get those changes on my machine here, uh, locally here, so if I if I type things out here and I look at readme.md here, uh, 
it, it, it doesn't reflect those changes because I haven't pulled those changes yet, okay? So I have to call git pull, and this is going to pull any kind of changes on the remote repository down to my local repository. So if I do git pull, it says, oh yeah, we I noticed that readme.md um, has a couple new uh, new lines in here, okay? And so if I do uh, git pull, uh, or if I check here, and I look at readme.md, I can open that up, nano readme.md, and you can see it now has those uh, those changes here. I'm editing the file here on GitHub. Our net is now reflected uh, in these things. Okay, so this is that's how um, that's how you create a repository, and uh, and you can kind of push and pull these different changes. So uh, the process pushing changes from your local computer to GitHub. So you make your changes, you add them, you commit them, and then you push them to GitHub. Okay, and then. To get them onto your own thing, changes are made on the remote repository, and then you call git pull, and that's going to pull them onto your thing. Okay, um, in our class, I, so this is going to my professor account, so on GitHub, my professor account, my account is Smiles Chen, okay, and this is my repository that I'm going to have for this class, okay, 2024-Fall Stats 21. And what I want you to do is, uh, and so I'm going to post all of our lecture notes here, and you're going to, what I want you to do on, on your account is I want you to um, fork my repository, okay? So, um, so here I'm still logged in under my student account, okay? And I'm going to go to uh, the professor's account. Have I get, I've given you how many view quiz answers? One. Okay, let me give you the second one. The second one is A. A as an apple. A as an apple is your second answer. Okay, I'm going to hurry up. <laughs> okay, so this is the professor's account. This is me, the professor's account. And then, so as a student, what I want you to do is I want you to click fork. Okay, and that's going to Fork the repository. It says create a new fork. Okay, we're going to create a repository of 2024 fall stats 21. And you're just going to cr click create fork. And, uh, and so what forking will do is it's going to kind of create kind of your version of my thing here. All right. And so under uh, the Miles Chen student account, now we have the demo repo, which I showed you. And then we have the forked repository. Okay, and so with this forked repository, we're going to clone that onto our computer. Okay, so again, uh, under code, we're going to hit the drop down. We're going to go to the SSH. We're going to copy that address. Okay, over here, I have to go back to my home directory. Okay, don't fork, don't clone it into your demo repo or whatever. Okay, um, go back to your home directory, and in the home directory. I'm going to call git clone, and I'm going to paste that address, okay, 24, 24, fall, stats 21. So this is going to clone the forked repository onto my machine here. So now if I um, change into this directory of 2024, um, I, can, I have all of the contents of, uh, from the direct, uh, you know, from the class repository here, okay? Uh, what you need to establish now is you need to establish additional remote repositories, okay? So, so the way it's going to work is you have your cloned repository, okay? So, you, um, and then um, you have to establish what's called an upstream repository. So, <laughs> Don't want to break. Uh, okay, um, so this is kind of basically the professor's 2024 fall uh, 
repository, okay? And you've created a fork to basically student uh, 2024 uh, fall, okay? And then, um, and then this is your local computer, okay? This is your, um, okay, so this is your local computer. And so you use, you know, git, git clone to get it over, and then, you know, git uh, push, git pull to, uh, to get these changes. Okay. However, as I go along, I'm going to be making changes, right? I'm going to be adding files. Me, the professor, I'm going to be adding files. And so you need to get those things. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to have to establish what's called an upstream, okay? And you're going to, uh, okay, because the idea is, um, this is further up the stream, right, of kind of how, how content flows. So you're going to want to start pulling information from the upstream repository, not from just this one. So you're going to do git pull upstream, and then you're going to have to do uh, upstream main, OK? But you have to tell it where the upstream repository is. So that, that's done by establishing, um, you have to add, uh, do git remote add. Uh, upstream, and then you're going to uh, put in this address. So, um, from we're going to go back to the professor's account. Okay. All right. So it should say Smiles Chen right here, and you're going to copy the address here for Smiles Chen. So everybody's thing, your upstream repository will say Smiles Chen. Okay, because that's the professor's account. And so if you type in uh, Git Remote. Um, dash V, this will just kind of give you your current listing of remote repositories. Right now, when you first clone it, you only have the origin. Okay? That's this one. Okay? When you do git clone, you're just getting the origin repository. What we want to do is we want to establish an upstream repository. So we're going to do git remote add upstream. Okay? Git remote add upstream. You're going to paste in the address. That address that you paste in should say Smiles Chen. Okay? And again, all of the instructions, you can rewatch this video. The instructions are also on the slide. It says git remote add upstream, and you're going to put this basically this address in. And in this case, it's 2024. Follow this. Okay? And after you do that, if you type in git remote dash v, now, now you're going to have four things listed. You have the origin and you have the upstream. And then in the future, as I put more stuff into my uh, repository here, you're going to call git pull upstream main, and that's going to get all the files from here. Okay. It feels like a lot. Okay. When you first get introduced to GitHub, or Git and GitHub, it feels like a lot. And you might be like, why don't you just post things onto Brew and Learn and things like that? Yeah, you know, it's, that would be like easier for you in the beginning, okay? But as, uh, I don't know if you've had this experience, but like sometimes the professor might post like five or ten files on Brew and Learn, and then you have to kind of download all of those things, and it gets a little tedious and obnoxious, and they all end up in your downloads folder, right? And then you have to kind of organize things that way, okay? Uh, this way, uh, if I post a whole bunch of stuff onto uh, GitHub all at once, and you just call git pull upstream main, it's going to pull all of those changes all at once. You don't have to download the files individually. You don't have to make sure. You know, sometimes if you, and then on, on Brew and Learn, if you accidentally click the same file more than once, right, and you download it, what are you going to get? You're going to get like uh, list.txt list parentheses one dot txt list parentheses two dot txt you get like multiple you know your computer tries to rename these things and stuff like that this is going to be a lot more cleaner uh, and a lot just kind of is <laughs> better and then it's going to be useful you know especially if you 
find a job where you're doing any kind of coding or things like that, almost certainly they'll be using uh, Git as a some kind of version control system there. Okay, we'll uh, we'll end our lecture here, and then uh, we'll give you your final view quiz answer here.